All right, so ready to get a little Dickens with it. We're diving into Oliver Twist today. Oh, classic and perfect for our deep dive today. Right. We've got the excerpts from that Project Gutenberg ebook. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, even though it's what, almost 200 years old now, the stuff about poverty and all that still kind of hits you in the gut. It's brutal. But that's Dickens for you. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. No, not at all. So, like, right off the bat, we're in this world, 19th century England. And not the glamorous parts, no. Uh -huh. We're talking about the parts of London, and England for that matter. Right. That most folks wouldn't have wanted to see. Exactly. Like that workhouse where Oliver is born. Man, just reading those descriptions. See, but that's the thing. It's more than just a description, right? It's like Dickens is giving us this whole system. Remember those details about the gruel and the tiny bit of oatmeal? Those weren't just like random food choices. That was the system at work. The poor laws dictating just how little they could get away with giving people. It's awful. And yeah. the way they treat Oliver's mom, I mean, just for wanting to know something about her own child. And who's grilling her? Mr. Bumble. Minor church official, mm. but he acts like he's the king or something. He's awful. More worried about his own little bit of power than actually helping anyone. It's power without compassion. And that's a recipe for disaster every time, isn't it? Totally. And then it just gets worse. Selling Oliver off as an apprentice to an undertaker, for yes. crying out loud. Talk about bleak. But it highlights something really important. Oliver and kids like him, they had no power. They were basically commodities. It's heartbreaking, though I gotta say, that little detail about Oliver holding onto that penny and the clean shirt, even while he's running away, that got to me. It's such a small thing, but so powerful. It's like this tiny spark of hope, you know, this kid who's known nothing but cruelty and deprivation, but he's clinging to something good, something pure. It's like he's refusing to let them take away his dignity, even if it's just a penny and a clean shirt. Amazing. Exactly. That's Dickens saying, look, even in this awful situation, the human spirit can shine through. And it's not just Oliver's story, right? I mean, he meets some characters. He's got Fagin, the artful dodger. It's like Dickens took these real life figures from the London underworld and just threw them into this story. He's not just telling us about poverty. He's populating that world. Mm. And each of those characters, they bring something different to the story. So should we get to know some of these characters a little better? Because while the setting's important, it's the characters that really make Oliver Twist something special. They do. Like, take Fagin. He's this whole operation going, training these kids to be pickpockets. It's awful. Like total villain, right? I think so. Yeah. But then you see these moments. He's not totally heartless. He's got this weird, messed up way of caring about these kids. It's true. He does seem invested in their education, if you can call it that. Yeah. And that's Dickens again. He makes you think, okay, this guy's terrible. But is he just a product of this awful system, too? Makes you wonder. Right. Like, how did he even get to this point? And then there's that part where he totally cowers in front of Bill Sykes. See, that's the thing about power, right? Even in the criminal underworld, there's always someone higher up, someone more brutal. And Sykes, he's brutality personified. He's a scary dude. The way Dickens describes his violence, it's almost like you're right there seeing it. And that was Dickens' world. Violence was a part of life, especially in those parts of London. Hmm. But Sykes, he's like the worst of the worst. Especially what happens with Nancy. I mean... You can't talk about Oliver Twist without talking about Nancy. She's something else. Here she is, stuck in this life. But then she does all this stuff for Oliver. It's clear she's got a good heart in there, somewhere. Exactly. It's like she's proof that even in the darkest places, there's still some good, some humanity. Her trying to help Oliver, mm -hmm. knowing how dangerous it was... That's a big deal. And you root for her. You want her to break free, to escape it all. But that's not really how these stories usually end, is it? Sadly, no. And it makes you think, could things have been different for any of them if they'd just been born into a different life, a different family? That's the question, right? <laughs> like Dickens is saying, don't look away. This is what poverty does. This is what happens when we ignore injustice. It's heavy stuff. But it's also what makes Oliver Twist so powerful. Dickens doesn't shy away from anything. He's not just entertaining us. Mm -hmm. He's making us think, making us confront these harsh realities. And that's what makes his writing timeless. It's like he's holding up this mirror to society saying, take a good look. This is us. And even though it was written so long ago, it still feels relevant. Exactly. Because even though we've made progress, those themes, poverty, exploitation, the fight for a better life, they're still with us. We've talked about the characters, the setting, the themes, 
But there's this other element to Oliver Twist that really gets me. It's that despite all the darkness, there's this glimmer of hope. Oh, absolutely. You can't forget about that. It's like this little ember that refuses to go out even when everything seems hopeless. And that's what makes it such an enduring story, right? I mean, people are still drawn to Oliver Twist. They keep adapting it, remaking it. Like, they're trying to capture that same feeling, you know? And they should. It's a story that deserves to be told and retold. There's something about those characters, that setting. It just sticks with you. It really does. But it's more than just a good story. It's like Dickens is saying something about humanity, about the world we create. And I think that's why it still resonates today, even though it was written so long ago. Absolutely. It's like he's reaching across time with his message about social justice, about poverty, about personal responsibility. And it makes you think, doesn't it? Like, how much have we really changed? That's the power of great literature, right? It, yeah. it makes you ask the tough questions. It challenges you. So someone's listening to this, right? And maybe they're thinking, okay, Oliver Twist, read it in high school, vaguely remember the movie. What would you say to them? Why should they care about this book today? Because it's not just a history lesson. It's a story about people, real people, struggling with poverty, with injustice, with trying to find their place in a world that doesn't seem to want them. Mm. And those struggles are still happening today all around us. Exactly. And Oliver Twist reminds us that we can't just ignore those struggles. We have to do something. Just like Dickens did. He used his voice, his writing, to shine a light on these issues. He was like an activist with a pen. He was. And that's what we need today, more than ever. People willing to stand up, speak out, and fight for a better world. Couldn't have said it better myself. So if you're feeling inspired, we always encourage everyone to check out the full text of Oliver Twist. It's free on Project Gutenberg. It's an experience. It really is. And don't just read it for the plot. Pay attention to the little details, the way Dickens describes things, the way he makes you feel. Because that's where the magic is. Well, that's our deep dive into Oliver Twist. Thanks for joining us for this one, folks. Catch you on the next deep dive, where we'll be exploring more ideas that matter.